Hey everybody, it's Tom the Sleazy Used Car Dealer here. I have another video kind of from the behind the scenes of a used car lot playlist that I'm adding to it. Uh, previously I have made a video about startup costs for a used car dealership. This video is actually about monthly costs or ongoing expenses, a little bit of P&L dissection of uh, a used car lot, kind of what costs run and uh, that'll give you an idea of how much potentially you might be able to make or how many cars you would want to sell in order to uh, reach your financial goals. So that being said, let's, let's get after this. All right, so there's a couple things we're gonna need to know. Uh, one is gross profit. Another is net profit. So uh, gross profit for argument's sake is the cost of your vehicle plus repairs plus commissions plus all the expenses that you want to pin to that car. Okay. Uh, you will take that number and then say you bought a $2,000 car you had auction fees was a hundred bucks. You put a radiator that was two hundred bucks. You got it detailed. So let's just say all in you're at twenty eight hundred dollars. By the time you did everything you wanted to, you put the cart for sale for four thousand dollars. So your gross profit on that car would be twelve hundred dollars. So that is gross profit. When we're looking at a P&L statement, it is um, adding all of the vehicles that you sold this month up. And in those same categories, your purchase prices, your repair costs, your sales commissions, your buyer premiums, your anything that you're pinning, you know, if you've got a detail guy that gets paid by the piece, something like that. Those are all going into that top line and going to be subtracted out and determine your gross profit. So let's remember that gross profit is basically how much you're making off of each car. For this you have net profit. Net profit is the number that was your gross profit, uh, that $1,200 that you made off of the car, and then you're going to subtract all of your other expenses, you know, your rent, your electricity, your insurance, your salary if you're paying yourself, or maybe you have a gopher that does everything that gets paid a, a weekly salary not paid by the job. Um, those sorts of things. When you take all of those expenses for the month and you subtract them from the gross profit for the month, that is net profit. That is how much uh, the business actually made. And we'll get into this at the end too, but then there is also taxes and fun things like that. So I'm going to run through some of my numbers uh, to show you kind of like what I'm doing and how mine works out. Don't get excited. I'm not telling you how many cars I made. I'm not telling you how much money I make at the end of the month, but I'm going to give you an idea of what the expenses might be. All right, so before we get into the nitty gritty of the numbers, I just want to let you know, remember, this is the formula. Gross sales, which is the value of the vehicles you sold, plus you would subtract, so saying plus doesn't help, subtract the value of the repairs, everything associated with those vehicles. That gets you to gross profit. Then we subtract all of our operating expenses. That gets you to net profit. And then from the net profit, we would determine our tax liability and things like that. Ready? Let's get going. All right, so I might be glancing off a little bit because I'm not super smart. And although I have these numbers mostly committed to memory, I don't necessarily have the number that I used or the order that I put them in. So we're going to start with what I always look at is my biggest expense, which is rent, rent on my building. You may or may not know that I also operate a transmission and auto repair shop on the same property, but I keep both businesses completely separate. I have two tax ID numbers. Uh, two sets of books, everything is completely separate. So what I do is I split the uh, expenses for the building down the middle. So in my, ins uh, my um, gosh, I shouldn't be doing this today. I just can't think. So for my example here, 
uh, if you look over to your left, you'll see the rent is $1,250. Uh, the rent to the building is actually $2,500. I've just cut it down the middle, $1,250 rent. The electric bill here runs about $400. It does decline a little in the winter and then it can get up to about six or 650 sometimes in the summer. But for the argument's sake, I've used the average of $400. And if it gets worse, I generally just pay that portion on my, on my repair shop. So we're gonna call the electric $200. If you don't know about commercial buildings, it's not necessarily like your house where you pay your water bill and you get trash pickup. So here, our landlord covers the water out of our rent because there's more than one tenant here, and I guess it's probably just a single meter. So our landlord covers our rent, but we have to have a dumpster for our trash, and that dumpster costs me about 190 a month. So I have that listed uh, over to your left, or I'm sorry, to your right, at $90. Now, I have internet, uh, which is a requirement for a car dealer. And that runs 198 or something a month for high-speed internet. And I have divided that and I have $100 for internet. Then one of the things I do is I use voice over the internet phones. I use Vonage. And it's really cool because you can set up different accounts uh, in terms of like press one for this or two for that. You can make it play an automated message that gives people directions. It can play an automated message to tell them that you're closed for Christmas and Thanksgiving. All sorts of neat, powerful things. Uh, so I use Vonage and it runs about $60 a month. What I also really, really like about Vonage is it gives you a cell phone line that is not really a cell phone. It runs through Vonage's app. So I can text customers. I can get texts. I can send photos. Um, I can give a cell number out and the shop phone that people call will forward them to my cell. So I will know if they've called our office line and the office forwarded to the cell number that Vonage assigned me or if they just called the cell number Vonage assigned me directly. The beauty of it is it is an app that runs on my iPhone so customers do not have my real cell number. So I can sign out of that app at 5.30 when I go home. I never have to worry about somebody blowing me up at 2 in the morning because the repo man got their truck or, you know, somebody that just doesn't have awareness of time and they're texting me at 11.30 about a car. So for me, Vonage is just an awesome tool. I highly recommend it. And then, of course, I have to have a cell phone to conduct business, even if it's just for using that app. And that is a uh, hundred bucks a month. So if you take my rent, my electric, my trash, my internet, my Vonage and my cell phone, that adds up to $1,800. Uh, for the purpose of this video, these are sort of the expenses related to the building. This is just what it costs to have a place to go to operate and do business. Uh, next, we're gonna get into some of the other fun and exciting costs that us used car dealers get to have. All right, these are what we call the somewhat fixed costs. Now, if there's any accountants in this uh, video watching it that wants to give me a hard time about my verbiage, this is not the order that things come through in a P&L statement. This is breaking it down so that the average Joe who maybe doesn't have a lot of business experience can understand how to, uh, what expenses are going to be and run a P&L and things like that. I will say that uh, one of the expenses I don't have on here is I was paying for uh, QuickBooks uh, I buy the desktop copy. I'm fixing to switch over to QuickBooks Online primarily because I'm switching from a PC to a Mac. I love the Mac. Uh, right now I've got that deal where you split the computer hard drive and sometimes you can boot it as a PC and sometimes as a Mac. I'm getting rid of that. Um, so it's not on there, but it's only like 30 bucks a month. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, the biggest expense aside from the rent and those sort of things is the garage policy. The garage policy is insurance for car dealers. And what that does twofold. One, it acts as a general liability policy. If a customer comes to my car lot, 
uh, they trip over the sidewalk. Uh, there was a piece of broken sidewalk or something. They fall, they chip their tooth. They go to the ER, whatever. That covers that. That's a general liability policy. Uh, somebody gets hurt on the property, whatnot. That's covered. The best part of the garage policy is that it is auto insurance. And it is not just auto insurance for a car I drive. It is auto insurance for every single car my car lot owns. So I can drive home a different car every night if I want to, and it is automatically insured. As a matter of fact, I drive a car that belongs to my car lot, my wife drives a car that belongs to my car lot, and I have an extra hard plate um, so that if we get a third car that we want to keep at home or a truck or something like that, uh, you know, we drive these cars to the lot and back, we can use them for personal use, and they are insured by the car lot. It's 100% legal, and we don't have any insurance expense at our home as it relates to vehicles. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the next expense I have up is a dealer management software. This is the software that prints you all your forms uh, when you're selling a car. If you're doing buy here, pay here, it'll print your sales contracts. If you um, are advertising online, a lot of these softwares, you can kind of put in your vehicle information and it will do it for you. Uh, it will list auctions, uh, I mean, you know, searches at the auctions. They can do all sorts of neat things. I do not use mine nearly as much as it is able to do. Um, some people don't use like QuickBooks or anything and they keep track of their profit and loss expenses in their dealer software. I don't do that. I use my dealer software just to decode my VINs and track the vehicles that I own and those expenses and to sell the vehicles either as cash pay vehicles or buy here pay here vehicles. But anyway, that software will run you depending on whose brand you're using, 100 to 150 a month in most cases. Mine actually debits my account at 107, so I suspect that means it's $99 and then Texas has an eight and a quarter percent sales tax. So uh, that's what that number is. Next up is advertising. I know there are dealers that spend tons of money on Google advertising, Facebook advertising, uh, maybe they use that crappy app OfferUp and they're paying them a flat fee. I think you get $249 or something ridiculous. I will tell you that I do next to no advertising. I advertise on Facebook Marketplace and I advertise on Craigslist. Craigslist gets $5 an ad for um, car dealers. And I will tell you that I hardly ever hit my $200 budget. I and sometimes I spend 50 bucks a month. I am fortunate. I don't have a lot of cars in inventory. I have a good reputation. I have people calling me every day or two. Do you have any new cars? Do you have anything that's not on your website? Do you have things coming down the pike? So my cars, when I list them, are usually uh, up for sale less than a week. And when I say a week, that's five business days. We're not open on the weekend. So I'm pretty fortunate. I don't have to spend a lot to sell my cars. Like literally, we put it out there within a week, it's gone and it's gone at full price. Matter of fact, if you've been watching my videos, I did have a Chevy Trailblazer that initially I thought was a pooch screwer. It actually turned out to be okay. I didn't spend as much as I wanted to on it to get top dollar. Uh, once we realized it wasn't a pooch screwer and it was reliable, we basically put it out for sale and it's sold, it's gone, and there'll be a video coming out about that soon. Anyway, next up, office supplies. Office supplies, pretty basic. You know, you need printer paper, pens, pencils, rubber bands, deal folders, uh, markers, all that kind of stuff. I use about $100 a month, maybe a little bit less. But one thing I'll tell you is when you're making a budget, when I was a young man and I would make a budget, I would always try to come up with the rosiest image of what a budget could be. Like if my electric bill at home ran 215, my budget was 200. But the reality is I never hit it. So I always say when you're making a budget or planning or trying to figure out what you'd need to do to break even or whatever, Pick the worst effing number you can find. And if that doesn't scare you away, move on. Because the last thing you want to do is tie up all your money and screw the pooch and end up bankrupt. Okay? Uh, bank fees, 
Now, bank fees are any number of things. If you buy cashier's checks, the bank wants to charge you a fee. Nowadays, uh, if you use a teller sometimes, like a live person, there's a fee for that. If you deposit cash, even cash through an ATM, there is a fee for that. And then, God forbid, you can't balance your checkbook and you bounce a check, there's a fee for that. So I have a $50 a month bank fee in there because with my bank, cashier's checks are 10 bucks, so that's 20 right there every month. And then uh, the cash deposit fee, which is, you know, $5, $20, something like that. It just depends. But again, I want my budget to be uh, exceed what my expense is. Uh, next up is security expense. Security expense can be your alarm monitoring, can be, um, like I have a pit bull. My pit bull is my bodyguard. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of times angry customers come up and MF you if you repossess their car. So my pit bull is security expense. He is a private uh, bodyguard, if you will. My accountant feels that he can defend that statement. So uh, about 50% of my pit bull related expenses are uh, expensed through my company. So, you know, about one third of the dog food that I buy, one third of the treats, 50% of the medical. So on average, we spend about $100 that we can write off. Now, if you're doing alarm monitoring, that's your security expense. Um, I did try saying, hey, I got a CHL. If I go to the gun range and practice, is that security expense? He said, no, that won't work. But I did say, hey, I'm going to buy a pistol to leave at the shop. That does work. So, you know, you can't buy your whole arsenal and, and say that that's security expense. But buying a firearm that stays at the shop for protection of employees is a legitimate security expense. Uh, next one up I have is tolls, $50 for tolls. That's because my car has toll tag. I go and buy a lot of cars from individuals and not always at the dealer auction. So those are expenses that are um, relatable and expensable. Next up also then is auto fuel. I've got a budget of $250 a month. That's about what I spend uh, driving around, looking at cars, doing my errands. All those shop-related expenses, uh, exercises that have to be done. So $250 a month in gas for those vehicles. Now, if you take all of that, the garage policy, the dealer software, advertising, bank, office, security, tolls, and fuel, the somewhat fixed costs. No, I'm looking at my screen now that I've typed it up this way. My, my, here we go. My somewhat uh, fixed costs are $1,342. Again, if you're going to build a spreadsheet to determine what your expenses are going to be and guess at what margin you're going to make on your cars and then determine how many cars you're going to need to sell, um, always aim high. Don't, don't play the, the game of maybe I can get it cheaper or, oh, you know, I'm going to sell 30 cars a month when everybody else is saying, yeah, maybe you're going to sell 10 or 15 the first six months. So don't get crazy ambitious with your numbers. Be very conservative. And if that does not scare you, then move forward. Hey, everybody, this is Tom. If you're still watching my video, that means you're watching this plug. And what I want to ask for in this plug is for you to give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I recently looked at my Facebook data and I found out that only 5%, 5% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed to my channel. I know part of it is because some of the stuff I do is very specific information. How do you sign your title? How do you get a copy of your title? What do the different title colors mean? And that's something that you probably go to YouTube because of a Google search. You find that information, you get your question answered, and you're done. And that's one of the reasons I've started including some behind the scenes from my car dealership into my channel. So if it's content that you think you like, that you might like, that you know someone that would like, or you just constantly are having questions, maybe you're buying and selling cars on your own at home in your garage, maybe you're thinking of opening a dealership, a subscribe to my channel and a like would go so far. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. 
Okay, here are a few more expenses. First one I've got up is M&E, which is meals and entertainment. So you are allowed to write off your meals that you're providing people while you're working. And if you are entertaining uh, customers or vendors, things like that. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I have a budget of $500. I, um, I do business with some of my family that um, may go in and invest on a car. If they have some extra money, they, hey, can we get a car and, you know, we'll split it or we'll split it. You know, there'll be some sort of split. So we will often, uh, you know, discuss that over dinner. And dinner is probably not fast food. Uh, completely allowable. Then I charge uh, $167 a month accrual to uh, my P&L for my accountant. Now what an accrual is, is we don't pay him monthly. <clears throat> I pay him $2,000 a year. And he is paid quarterly. That doesn't sound right. I think he gets $1,500 a year. Anyway, he is paid quarterly. He auto-drafts my account. So I allot that money of $167 every month. And what will happen, of course, is there will be, you know, two months where I'm way under budget. And then the third month, I'm way over budget um, because that draft has hit. That $500 auto draft has hit or whatever the number was. Um, but what happens when you look at your P&L on a quarterly basis the number falls in line. So another one is a uh, license renewal. <clears throat> Dealer licenses are good two years, or is it three? I think it's two, two years. I am really not with it today, guys, and I apologize. Dealer licenses are good every two years. You have to buy your bond and you have to buy your license. So that I'm not bit in the keister with that, I budget that money on a monthly basis. What happens is we move some of this accrual money out um, and have it set aside in a different account so that when these things come due, we're prepared for them. Then the next one I have on there is temp, day, temp labor facility. What that is, is if I'm hiring guys that I'm paying them $50 to get in a bus and uh, we van them down, you know, bus, van, whatever, we transport them down to the dealer auction they pick up a car for us, they drive it back, they collect $50, $75, whatever. That is a vehicle specific expense. So that would go up on the top with the gross profit. If it is a guy that we pay him $100 a week to come in and sweep our shop up, clean it, clean the restroom, replace toilet paper, take out trash, that is an expense that the whole business is paying so he is not assigned to a vehicle and then not in the gross profit. So that's the difference. If it's your secretary, office manager, uh, somebody that just they get a flat salary and their job is for the entire business, they show up on the bottom part of the P&L, not on the top part. So if you add these accruals that I've talked about up, it's $1,317. Uh, so that's money that you need to plan on spending as well. All right. So those are the expenses that I could remember when I was thinking about making this video. They are the expenses that are embedded in my categories on my P&L statement. And let's just run through all together. The uh, related costs of the building is 18. Somewhat fixed costs 13.42. Variables and accruals 1317. So my total expense 4459. Arguably $4,500 a month. That's what the dealership needs to make just to keep the lights on and pay the bills. I do want to point out if you look in the bottom there, it says no, this does not include any money for me or tax on my business. So this is not me taking a salary. The only person getting paid out of this would be somebody that I'm paying piecemeal to detail a car, and that's part of the car expense, or to pick the car up at the auction, that's part of the car expense, or the part-time guy that helps with the yard and cleaning up and things like that. So that is no money for me yet, guys. That is just the start. Now let's talk a little bit more about money for me, how many cars you need to sell, what your expenses are going to be, and all that fun stuff. 
Okay, so there are lots of ways to pay your taxes. I am paying myself as a, a single member LLC. What that means is I pay my income tax on the business uh, through my personal taxes, my 1040. So when I make money, it's paid on a Schedule C. Say my business made $75,000 is what the profit is on my business at the end of the year. Okay. So on my Schedule C, it shows that I made $75,000. That's one of the different tax forms within your 1040, which is your personal tax return. Out of that $75,000, I'm required to pay personal uh, self-employment tax. So self-employment tax is basically, you know, if you look at your hourly paycheck, there's VUDA, FUDA, SUDA, FICA, blah, blah, blah. If you add those up, they are 7.65%, I believe it is, of your wages. But because I'm self-employed, the company has to pay the other, which is what they do on your W-2. If you work for ABC company, they take out 7.65%. You pay that. However, your company pays 7.65%. So because I am the company, I am paying over 15% self-employment tax on my profit from my business. Then I also pay federal income tax on the money that I have made. And that is subject to whatever tax rate you have, either if it's yourself or you're married or whatever. My wife and I are married. My wife makes a decent living. So we add my 75, we add hers, and then uh, the accountant figures out what our tax rate is, and I pay tax on that as well. That's how my business does it. Um, some people do a corporation. You're a subchapter S. Uh, some do just a straight corporation. I believe that's a C. Um, there's partnerships. There's different ways to pay. So when you are ready to do that, you will want to talk to your accountant and decide what system is best for you. They, uh, different things work differently based on someone's total situation. So I do not want to get in the habit of giving out tax advice. I'm just telling you that is how it works for me so keep in mind that a tax bill can be pretty hefty you would also want to consider not doing your uh, LLC and paying it through your schedule C you can elect to have a, 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 a LLC pay taxes as a separate entity and if that happens you would then be able to um, write yourself a regular paycheck as if you were an hourly employee. You would pay your six, uh, what is it? 7.65, I think is the number um, in your taxes. And the company still pays the other 7.65, but it is now tax deductible for the company. And again, your accountant can answer that for you better than I can probably articulate it. All right, guys, as I always say at the end, there it is. That's the video. Um, that shows you kind of what your expenses are. Now, if you wanted to figure out, quote unquote, how many cars do I have to sell in order to make my money? Well, the first thing you would do, you're going to engineer it backwards. Say I want to make $50,000 from my car lot, which keep in mind there are tax advantages. So $50,000 through an LLC is different money than $50,000 through a W-2. So I want to make $50,000. Okay, and then there's a tax liability on that. Uh, Self-employment tax is 15%. So $50,000 times 0.15. That's how much you need to make, and then you'll pay your taxes on that. So let's just say, um, you know, 15% is 75. So let's just say, it's, if I, I think it's 50, 57,500. So for argument's sake, let's say 60,000 you want to make, okay? You divide that by 12. That means you need to make $5,000 a month. Now, in my situation, we have uh, about 49, uh, 45 something that we had listed as our total expenses, right? So we're gonna add that to the five 
And then we'll say, for argument's sake, nice whole numbers, $10,000 a month. You have to make, you have to profit $10,000 a month, gross profit, to cover your operating expenses and your take-home salary. So how many cars do you need to sell a month to do that? Well, you need to figure out what you're going to be making gross profit per vehicle. Are you going to be making $500? a thousand fifteen two thousand that's the number you need to know and part of that's going to depend on the sale price of the vehicles where you're sourcing the vehicles and things like that so let's just say you make a thousand dollars a car okay you need to make ten thousand in net profit to pay your bills that's the five thousand plus or minus the forty five hundred we talked about plus you need five thousand dollars to pay your bills at home. So you need to sell 10 cars per month in order to do this. That's it, 10 cars. Now, can you do it as a newbie? I don't know, it might be difficult. I don't know, how many cars are you gonna have on your lot? If I have 100 cars on my lot and I can't sell 10, there's a problem. If I have 10 cars on my lot, selling 10 could be a little bit of a challenge because there's maybe not a big selection for people. Uh, you have to figure out the kind of cars that are selling. You have to figure out the kind of cars that you can get a good margin on. But that will give you an idea of what you need to do to figure out what your monthly expenses would be, add in what you want to make, and how much are you going to make per car. I will tell you that on average, I make $1,500 a car. My cars sell between thirty-five dollars and $5,000, occasionally $6,000. I would say the average is thirty-five to fifty-five. dollars and on average, I make $1,500. Uh, there are cars that I don't make 500. There are cars that I hit a home frickin' run and I make three grand. Doesn't happen as often as only making 500, but my average when I look at the end of the year is $1,500. So keep that in mind. You could do better, you could do worse, but that hopefully has given you some incentive to look into it for yourself and see how you might do. Thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it, as always, and a like and subscribe would be totally appreciated. Leave me a comment, say what you want. If you like the video, if you think I'm an idiot, if you want to see some kind of related content, just let me know and we'll get to it. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.